Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. I want to show you all the things that I am growing in here. We're gonna do a little tour of our indoor growing space and I'm gonna introduce you to all of my plant starts. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Mm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. growing and somehow we've been able to manage it all with our almost six month old. Fortunately, this spring, like the previous springs, every spring we've gardened, the May comes on and I'm so excited to plant and April was lovely and warm and 70 degrees and May comes and it's just cold. The lows are in the 30s, the highs are in the 50s and we just can't do anything about it but wait. Um, Planting early means stunted plants, plants that are gonna suffer. So right now I'm just keeping them in their little four inch pots and we will get them out in the ground when the temperatures are warmer, the soil's warmer. Hopefully next weekend we're gonna do some planting. Okay, so I don't even know where to start today, but I have some really exciting things this year. I just opened up my shipment of seed potatoes. So I'm gonna show you guys the different potatoes we're growing. I have so many lovely peppers right next to me and then I have some smaller ones growing on the grow shelf. Um, some tomatoes, I have a cool new rare fruit that I'm growing this year. Um, I just planted some seeds of something I'm growing this year that I'm really excited about and lots of flowers. This is the year of the flowers and I'm really excited about all the flowers we have growing including some dahlia bulbs that I'll pull out and show you what varieties we're going to grow of dahlias. So. Without further ado, let's get started and we'll tour my indoor growing room. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the peppers and tomatoes since that's what I have close and then I will readjust, reorganize and we'll go through all the other stuff that we have growing this year in our grow room. So let's talk about peppers. I started my hot peppers earlier than my sweet peppers this year because I've noticed in the past that the hot peppers take longer to germinate and to grow. So I kept good records of all the pepper varieties that I'm growing in my garden journal, which is something you can get on Etsy. Um, I'll link it in the description below, but this has some really great record keeping sheets for seed starting, for ongoing garden um, maintenance, weekly garden notes, Okay, so I kept track of all the peppers on this sheet right here, which has a spot for crop variety, the desired number that you want, and the germinated number. Let's start with my hot peppers, because those are the ones that I have right next to me, these lovely peppers. I did top them off this year. As you can see, they are bushing out really nicely. So they've got like lots of um, side shoots coming off of the main stem. So I topped all of them off and even the sweet peppers. So the hot pepper varieties I'm growing this year, we've got Tabasco, Hungarian wax, two different varieties of cayenne, but only one germinated, so it's a slim red cayenne, jalapeno, habanero, sugar rush peach, Chinese five color, poblano, which isn't really spicy, but it took longer to grow, so I put it in this section, and paprika, which is a spicy paprika. The one that's new to me this year is the Sugar Rush Peach and the Hungarian. I've grown all the other ones before. As far as sweet peppers go, I am growing red bells, um, two different red bells. Um, one's called Edgevarsky, and one's called King of the North. I'm actually growing four different red bells. The other two were big red and piecework. 
I'm growing a few different colors, an orange bell, a chocolate bell, um, and two yellow bells, Golden California and Sunbright. A few different like snacking sweet peppers like banana peppers, golden honey, which is something from Baker Creek that I'm trying for the first time. It just looked really delicious and beautiful. Um, habanera, which is a sweet version of the habanero, so no spice, but similar flavor. Arroz con pollo, but none of them germinated, so nix that one. And corbachi and Jimmy Nardello. I also added a new one this year, um, recommended by Petra at Fruition Seeds, and she developed this new variety with Cornell. It is like a sweet snacking pepper. They're small, but they're multicolored, really beautiful, um, called the collage. Let's head on over to the tomatoes and we'll talk about what tomato variety I'm growing. I changed a couple things about tomatoes this year. First of all, as you can see behind me, I am growing fewer tomatoes. We found that we just had so many tomatoes, a lot of them we couldn't harvest or keep up with. We end up with so many tomato products that we can't use. So instead of doing like 50 to 60 at one, one year, I did 100. I am going with about 40 to 50 tomato plants. I have 36 here, but there's a number of tomato plants I need to divide still. Like in here, I, I have two plants, so I'm gonna need to divide these. And speaking of maintenance, I do need to water these guys because the soil is looking pretty dry. Anyways, so as you can see in this tomato forest, everything's looking really good, really healthy, nice and strong, strong stems. We're also focusing on fewer varieties that we really love instead of having tons of different varieties um, that we can't use for lots of different purposes. So my favorite tomato to grow by far is the Italian heirloom. Grew it for the first time last year and it was the earliest producer. Great for sandwiches, great for sauces. It's a paste tomato, but also it works really well as a slicer. So loved it. One of my favorites, my favorite for sure. And then another favorite is the honey drop, which is a cherry tomato, similar to sun gold, but an heirloom and full of just like delicious sweet flavor. I'm not a huge cherry tomato person, but Chris really loves to eat them. We all, all always find that just a couple tomato plants of the honey drop is plenty for us. I actually only planted, I think two, uh, but I might have doubles in those pots. So I might end up with extra again, we'll see. Any extras this year, I'm going to try to give away or sell because I don't want them to go to waste. And then a few other favorite slicers. Uh, these are different heirloom varieties. We have the copia tomato, which I use saved seeds from. It's like a yellow orange tomato, really beautiful, great flavor, mild. Um, we have the gold metal, which is an heirloom from fruition seeds. Tried it for the first time last year. Big, beautiful fruit, huge, really, really good flavor. It's an orange, red, yellow. It's really beautiful, nice golden color. And then I'm also doing a new one called Dad Sunset. I got those seeds from Baker Creek. And I am doing Blue Beauty, which um, they're seeds that I got from Baker Creek, but they're grown by, I can't think of the name. I know his name's Brad, but what's his farm called? I can't think of it. If you can think of it, you can put it down in the comments below. I'm sure lots of people will think of it and they're gonna, give you all the suggestions. Okay, anywho, let's move on. Um, I got a couple more tomato varieties last minute from my sister. She's out in San Diego and I thought I'd try some new ones because I can't quit. Even when I start all the ones I want, I decide I want more last minute. So I've got a, cute, uh, a few little baby tomatoes. There's like a peach variety that's from San Diego Seed Company, I believe. Indigo Rose, which they love, so I thought I would give it a try. The Blue Beauty are from Wild Boar Farms. Okay, so the other one I'm growing from my sister's seeds is Castelluto Genovese. I grew that a couple years ago and it was a really fun shape, really good flavor, but I didn't have seeds, I didn't save seeds, so I decided to use some of my sister's seeds and I started those. I have some of these like little guys here, but I'm not gonna divide these out, I'll just cut those. But I think I have probably about 50 to, to 60 tomatoes here. Um, the smallest ones, I'm just gonna snip. 
the ones that are nice and big I'll divide and plant and then I only want to plant 50 at most. Hold me to that guys. In two weeks or three weeks when I do our first garden tour, if I have more than 50 tomatoes, you better, you better tell me to, uh, to do better next year, I guess, because <laughs> what else am I gonna do? Let's move on to the other nightshades. We've got some tomatillos, we've got some eggplants, we've got some ground cherries. Let me show you them and we'll talk about them. I'm standing next to the eggplants. Um, I planted mostly Black Beauty eggplant and I planted, I believe, about eight of them. And then I have one other kind of eggplant which is a rare variety from the Middle East and I don't know the name of it. I actually got seeds from my friend Meg from Seed to Fork. She lives in Wisconsin? Doesn't sound right. Minnesota. She lives in Minnesota, zone four. And it's quite cold there, um, but she is able to do a lot of seeds and extension and she grows amazing things. You should really check out her garden on Instagram. And she also has a YouTube channel, Seed to Fork. Just an amazing gardener. She's like who I go to for information when I can't find the information locally. So I'm growing something from her. I had sent her a message last year in response to her sharing this eggplant on her stories. And I said it looked so fun and so beautiful. And she sent me some seeds and only one germinated. So I'll have one of those plants. And I need to figure out the name of it. So I'm gonna look it up from her. But I have that one growing, I'll show you guys. It's doing really well. And I just got dirt all in my hair. It's the only one I've got. And the label says Meg's, Meg's egg, Meg's egg because I shorthand everything when I'm writing all the markers. I do also have a number of ground cherries and I'm trying to find them. They must be up here. We have so many um, fungus gnats this year, so many. So I need to be better about sterilizing my pots next year because that's definitely where they came from. We have ground C, which is ground cherry, the common type. Um, these are from Baker Creek. I have ground P, which are ground cherries pineapple, ground cherry pineapple. And then I just started another one that I got from my sister in San Diego. She uses San Diego Seed Company and I got grabbed some of her seeds for the Peruvian type. Very different, they grow very different, they taste very different. And I tried them when I was at her house. They're bigger, they're more orange, and they're more tropical tasting. They're really, really tasty. So I wanted to have those in my garden. I grow a green tomatillo from Fruition Seeds. And this year I have five plants. I wanted only to grow two, but um, as is my issue with other things, I ended up growing more. Oh well. While I'm up here, I wanna show you something I'm really excited about. This little guy right here, I have two of them. Any guesses as to what this is? I'll give you 10 seconds to guess. And don't worry, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, but if you wanna guess, go ahead and guess now in the comments. So I read about this online. It was late at night. I was probably pumping um, for my six month old. And that's when I tend to go on Etsy and buy stuff. And I decided I wanted to grow these. I saw them online and bought plants online. They shipped me the little seedlings and I put them in little pots. So it is something called pepino. It is a fruit, a perennial fruit. So in our region, it will not overwinter, but I'm gonna put them in grow bags and bring the grow bags in the grow room in the winter. Anywho, it's called pepino. It's like kind of a melon-like fruit, but small really cool. Um, I'm excited about it. So I'm growing that. I've got two of them. I've also got some salmon, salmon rose zinnias up here. I have some blue scabiosas and black scabiosas. I have echinacea, some different hot peppers, sweet peppers, rosemary, pineapple sage, a bunch of fun stuff up on this top shelf. And then down on this middle shelf, is where my eggplant and peppers are. I already told you about all the peppers I'm growing. So these are my sweet peppers and um, my eggplant right here. Okay, so I have 
a bunch of flowers down here. So this is a big mix of zinnias. They're all different kinds of zinnias. Um, some are Zinderella, some are Queen Lime, some are Persian, so many different zinnias. I have two different kinds of Cosmos over there, and then I have my nasturtium here, and more nasturtium over here. I think my favorite seedlings are nasturtium seedlings. They're so fun. Look at those little leaves. Next to the nasturtium, I have yarrow, and then I have straw flower, and then this one... Oh, um, flowering, flowering tobacco, which I got from Floret Farm. Silene. Silene and flowering tobacco are for, are for cut flower arrangements. And then the last row is California poppies and only two germinated. But that will be plenty. So those are all the flowers I have here. And then I have some more flowers down there. More flowers are germinating in our raised bed, which is going to be the cut flower garden. We've got three raised beds and that's where I'm planting all my flowers. I have dahlias outside already and then I have dahlias inside that I have not planted yet. And then I planted a row of um, like different neutral pastel gladiolas out in the garden already. Okay, so you can see these little babies down here are beets. So I planted golden beets and I planted early wonder beets. Back here is a, a flower called Felicia, back to the right, and that is a lavender colored um, flower that pollinators love and it's native to our region. And then these three empty pots right here is something called Maypop, which I'll talk about in a second. This is my black scabiosas. Um, I just added some others in these empty cells so that they would be 100% full. And then here is the Mirage peppers that I mentioned. And then in this tray right here, I am waiting for germination on, on a flower called Crespedia, which says it takes like 20 days to germinate. So I need to water this tray real quick. So give me a second. And then this guy, he is a rare breed of rescue tabby. I normally bottom water everything, but when the soil's this dry, I find that it helps to get a little bit of water. Whoops, spilling water. Um, I find that it helps to get a little bit of water in the soil on the top, and then I bottom water the rest. I have sour gherkins, which I started germinating already, and they're growing really well. I find that they take a long time to start, so I decided to start them indoors. I have goji berry. This is a perennial berry um, bush that I'm hoping to plant in our perennial bed outside. And then I have snowball cauliflower and some more bell star broccoli. This is where I have the tiny little Peruvian ground cherries. They're just germinating. And I have the tomato varieties from my sister in San Diego. And then over here I have some herbs. So I have some rosemary in the back there. I have some purple basil, um, opal basil. I have some Thai basil some holy basil, and then just a large leaf basil, which is the one that germinated like crazy over there. And I can't show you the grow room without showing you the two new tree additions to this indoor growing space, something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I mentioned it in a recent video, the nursery hall video. I'll uh, link that below, I'll try to remember. But let me show you guys, I have two citrus trees now that are in here. They're gonna be going outside this summer, but they'll come back in in the fall and they'll stay in here until the, the spring of next year. So we have a lime tree, this is a Persian lime tree, and we have a Valencia orange tree. The lime tree already has lots of little limes on it, which is very exciting. And the orange tree, I have no idea when orange oranges blossom, but nothing right now, so stay tuned on that. I did prune this because it was like falling over quite a bit, so now it's not falling over. I'm gonna keep it pruned. Since they're gonna be in pots, they're gonna need to stay smaller because there's only so many nutrients that you can fit in these large pots. And then this is my little Persian lime. And you can see, um, you find the little baby fruit. Oh, here's a bunch of little babies. There they are. Before we finish this growing room, growing space tour, I wanna show you the dahlias that we'll be growing this year. So let's head on over to the potting bench again so I can show you guys those. 
I got a bunch of Dahlia tubers. Last year, after the first couple frosts, right when I needed to dig out my Dahlia tubers, I had a baby. So mid-November, we were having frosts, time to dig up the Dahlias, and we were coming home with a newborn. And I just, I just forgot. There was a couple weeks where I was, I remembered, and then I would forget, and then I would remember, and then I would forget. And ultimately, they all rotted in the ground. Which was unfortunate, because I was hoping we had kind of a mild winter. They were in raised beds. I was hoping maybe they would make it, but no, nope, there was worms all over those things and all in those things. So instead of feeling down and sad about not digging them up, I decided why don't I invest in some more tubers and be really good about labeling them and starting them and saving them and all the good stuff going forward. So starting off, I found a farm in New York called, now I don't remember the name of it, something New York wallflower that sounds wrong something I'll I'll figure it out and I'll put it in the in the description and one's called boom boom um, one's called sweet Nathalie I have a blizzard blizzard one one called Cornell bronze and Spartacus that I got from that farm in New York then I got some from Etsy from a seller. I really wanted Cafe Au Lait Dahlias and they sent me a Cafe Au Lait tuber from a seller in Etsy. I'll put all of these links in the description if you're looking for Dahlia tubers. I don't know if they're still going to be in stock or if it's a good idea to buy them now, but for future reference if you're looking for places to buy Dahlias. And then I got some from Fruition Seeds. Um, I did plant those already because we haven't had any frost and I do have row cover in case there's a frost risk and those have already started coming up um, but one of the varieties that I got from fruition seeds was rotted and so they were lovely and sent me um, a new tuber they actually sent me two replacement tubers of a different variety called stars favorite and these are really beautiful and then I got um, a yellow yellow tuber Dahlia called Kevin Floodlight from a farm on Etsy called Celtic Farm. They look like this. Um, so I have another yellow variety that I got. Um, this one is called Dazzling Sun. And this one's yellow, but it has orange in the middle. And finally, I got an orange um, variety that's called Prince of Orange. And it's just a really nice color. I have a few more things that I'm gonna be starting indoors, like my squash and cucumbers, because we have such a cool, cold May. I'm gonna go ahead and start some summer squash, some cucumbers, and some winter squash in um, my soil blocks. I'm really looking forward to trying that out because we had some major slug damage on all of our cucurbit seedlings last year. So I'm hoping by starting them in soil blocks this year, I'll be able to kind of get them big enough to where they're ready to go outside. Uh, I don't have to disturb their roots, they'll be in soil blocks, and I will avoid the slug mageddon that we had last year. And I have sweet potato slips coming sometime in late May or early June from Johnny Seeds. Do you wanna come say hi? One thing I grew last year that I'm not growing this year is a human. If you remember my video last year where I shared all the things I'm growing, that is when I announced that we were pregnant with Malachi. And now, well technically I am growing him still. So, I am technically still growing a human. It's just not in my belly. He is now outside. And uh, he's gonna be my little garden helper this year and he wants to come say hi to you all. You wanna come say hi? You look so confused. We're matching, I'm matching with my little koala. Malachi says hi to our friends on the YouTube. Do you see the camera? <gasps> Look! Well friends, that is our tour of our plant room, our indoor growing space, and the place where I grow all our seedlings for the year. Plus, this little guy. Malachi, say bye to our friends. Bye friends. We'll see you guys soon.